Well, that's what people call in regards to the purpose of meditation. And varying spiritual practices that we've tried to connect back to our place of stillness, of silence, of emptiness. This is the nothingness, or what we'd call nirvana. But in order for us to understand the reason why we do that, we first have to understand the greater non-physical aspect of who we are that exists prior to the relative space-time universe. Before time even began, there was the void. And that void was without form or substance. It was unaware. You can think of it as a dreamless sleep. All that was and all that ever can be was the void. That exists in an undifferentiated state. Now I understand that this concept is impossible to describe in language. Because language implies communication, which implies existence. And fundamentally speaking, pure awareness does not exist because it's the field of pure potential. It's not a thing, it's not a quantity. Awareness knows itself fully and completely but knows nothing outside of itself, for there was nothing outside of awareness. It exists in a perfect state of wholeness. All that was is the void. Devoid of thought, of images, of space, of time, of concepts, of duality. Without this awareness, time and space cannot exist. Because time and space requires measurement. And there was nothing existing to measure time and space. There was only infinite possibilities. So what we know as reality, based on our perceptual understanding of it, had not come into being. There was no space yet formed. For space requires size. And size requires what we know as measurement. And nothing can be measured when nothing exists. Whether you see the universe as trillions of trillions of light years across, or whether it was the size of a head of a pin, the smallest imaginable atomic particles. Without awareness, there is no time, no space. There's nothing relative to other points of reference. In this absolute hidden state, there is no other. But something happened. The void had became aware of itself as being something that came from nothing. This is the birth of self-awareness. The first I am, godly principle. It realized its own consciousness existed because of the image it had projected as a mirror to verify its own reality. This is the original subject-object split the observer in the observed. Without this manifesting, the void would have no reflection, no evidence of its existence. Without this, it cannot be conscious. Without expanding self-awareness, it would still only be the endless void. The universe came into being by the explosive revelation of the self and the other. It was sort of a dream within itself. The first thought was something different from the self. 
Something that can be watched, observed as separate. You have to understand that in the state of oneness, this creative self-organizing intelligence cannot conceive of anything other than itself, for there was nothing but the self. The diversification process had to be created in order to create a symmetry breaking, if you will, by fracturing a part of itself off from the whole until it is in like a first person's perspective. This is done in order to conceptualize and self-reflect on itself through time. This illusory appearance of differentiation in comparison to other reflected dimensional perspectives of itself. And this can be achieved through the template of relative polarity. Male and female, good and bad, big and small, and so forth. Consciousness is the quality of awareness that experiences itself as a distinct thing unto itself. It is the only thing that empirically exists. All experiences that anyone could ever have must take place within awareness. Otherwise, you cannot have an experience of them. You cannot experience anything other than you. All external realities observed are reflections of your inner reality, your vantage point of consciousness. Everything that we can perceive as things in our observable reality are mirrors of consciousness that reflect yourself back to yourself for a space-time experience. Consciousness is the identification with existence. It is the only thing that can be experienced. You cannot experience anything but yourself as the self. So consciousness, you can say, is the building block, the foundation to everything that we perceive through the mind and senses. Pure potential creating something out of nothing. Out of beingness came becoming. Out of thought came manifestation. All of these experiences that we have comes from pure awareness and its desire to know itself. Through all of its holographic fractal fragments, its facets of being expanding itself infinitely through the contrast. This excitement of realizing that it can create endless amounts of energetic configurations of thought. There is a lot of stuff to play around with. We can get in there and be a part of it. This is what happens within Source to participate within the imagined dream universe it had created. All of these ways of innumerable forms are there as vehicles of perception. It's an intelligent arrangement with particular vantage points of view through plants, animals, to humans. Infinite awareness playing finite awareness. The limitation game. The game to develop experiences of all sorts in this quantum soup, this vast electromagnetic spectrum of what we call life. And so it is up to us to remember who we are underneath it all. When we wake up to our true identity, where we can transcend the limits that we've placed upon ourselves, 
In enlightenment, you never really get rid of your personal story. You only stop identifying with it. The limitations that the thinking mind has devised for you to continue keeping you asleep in the game. The transition out of the game is when you become more aware of who you are. But these rigid, self-defined boundaries of identifying with our vehicles, our bodies, and the stories that we attached ourselves to will create personal suffering and anguish because it's unstable. It will aspire us, eventually, to go beyond it. To transcend it. To that which is boundless. Within each one of us, our God Self exists. Perfect knowing. Blissful consciousness. Dual consciousness can limit our perception. But we must be aware that the whole which is non-dual awareness is what frees us from this limitation. When we want to go beyond it. When we so choose to wake up from the dream of identifying as a separate self-conscious being. This is our power of focus. Because our focus becomes our reality. It's important to withdraw our attention from being stuck in the endless details of illusion. And that would mean everything that is perceivable. Your lucidity depends on what the center of your attention is focused on. If you keep focusing on what you see, it keeps your attention trapped and bogged down fostering unrealized delusions. If your attention is focused on the seer, the perceiver, then you foster awakening. When you are awakened, awareness becomes aware of itself, aware that it is the source of all the projected reality. When this happens, you create a mental break from the conditionings, an endless stream of thoughts that create a false sense of identification. Be very mindful that nothing exists outside of you, external from you, because nothing exists outside of consciousness. What you perceive as external it's just awareness fixating its attention to the mirrored projections, which are all phenomena. We must accept responsibility for all our created mental projections unconditionally, for they are just different aspects of ourselves projected outwards. All is the totality of the one self. You are nothing, yet everything. Then you cannot be defined. You cannot be boxed in. Because you're infinite. And this is what it means by infinite potential. There is nothing that isn't you. There are no distinctions. Everything is a part of your imagined dream. The scene. Accept awareness itself. You are not the dream body that you've played the role as. It's just an association, a temporary identification of pure awareness. So understand that there is a me, which is the subject of experience, and an apparent not me, which is the object of experience. In order to awaken, we must deconstruct our current model of reality based on our mind and sense perceptions so that we can begin to disentangle the subject-object knot of limited perception that is intentionally standing between who you believe yourself to be and the fundamental reality of your infinite identity. 
Awakening to enlightenment means that we make a paradigm shift wherein experiencing no longer seems divided into a separate me and all that is not me. This can be considered the end game. Only focus on that center of seeing, the awareness that you are aware of, that which is always whole, indivisible, and ever present. This is the surrendering into who you are, to the awakening of the dreamer.